Howdy, y'all. It is Cody from the Keepers of Nerdum. How you doing? So I was finally got to play a bigger game of Warhammer 40k in 10th edition. We did a little quick one, uh, 500 points, which really just didn't give us a good understanding of what we had. And then we went to a full-on 2,000-point battle on July 1st. Chef's Kiss, mwah, very, very nice to, to do. Uh, I was Necron War, Necrons, and my opponent was Adeptus Custodes. We learned a lot. I, I just want to give you my thoughts. Uh, I've got up here my MVP. My force consisted of Lich Guard with Vargard Oberon and Nemesir Zandrek leading. Uh, I think they are standouts. Very, very good. I had Necron Warriors with Orkin the Diviner, two Crypto Thralls, and an Overlord. Really cool. Really cool. Overlord saved himself from a sniper shot because of his minus one of damage. I had three scarabs in a, in a small unit. They got shot off the board in immediately. I had a monolith, a full squad of locust destroyers with a locust lord, and then locust heavy destroyer squad full up with two of the big weaponry and one of the in, in mythic disintegrators um what else did i have that might have been it no an immortal squad with Immotech the storm lord leading them just to protect Immotech and just be with them and actually Immotech was really cool yeah so okay let's let's go through it all uh my opponent was Adeptus Custodes. He had some guards, uh, some custodies, uh, custodians, some wardens. Uh, Blade Champion was leading one of those groups. And then the custodian guard leader was leading the other group. And then Trajan was leading a small thing of, I think, wardens as well with the spears. And then he had a sniper guy, an Imperial agent up on a building crazy stuff there very frustrating and he had a group of three terminators in the squad and two terminators in the squad in deep strike and so turn two they just came in with an unholy terror and lastly the, i don't know exactly the name of this thing but it's a forge world model that he has or he's getting to build fully and this thing was crazy it, it's some sort of big gunship like over 500 points and we looked at its profile i mean it was nuts uh I, I think one thing to note that anybody that says damage has gone down in warhammer 40k isn't paying attention because i i think the damage is still there you just have to look for it in the right spots uh turn one he moved up nothing happened I actually spawned my my monolith on the board and I should have kept him in reserves for turn two so I could actually have some time. Um, monolith is the biggest joke of a vehicle in the game in a way. It has no invuln save. None. And with the heavy, heavy weapons that could be trained on it from bigger stuff. And it's it, it got decimated in one volley of fire from his big gunship thing. I wasn't expecting that. I, I don't even think my friend was expecting that either, but it was ri it was ridiculous. It was silly. What is the point of a big model that looks really tough when it's actually not? Give it an invuln save. Give it a feel of pain. Give it something because right now it is so vulnerable to lethal hits, devastating wounds, and massive AP weaponry. And it has more weaknesses than just about any vehicle outside of other, like my faction, like my doom scythe is the same way. It's terrible. But anyway, so I moved up and what I could shoot with was like the locust heavies. That was about it. Cause now the monolith also only has 24 inch range. Cause I was planning on having it out there just to yank back my veil of darkness, uh, Necron warriors. Uh, yeah. Um, Turn two is where it all went haywire. And everything came from the sky and just absolutely nuked. Devastating. Very devastating. Rightfully so. It was a good play. So I've got five Terminators in, into not my back line, but right in front of my Immortals. 
and my oh and i had a hex mark destroyer i forgot that was with my immortals for most of the game and so they were right there and then the big gunship the big gunship when it fired it took out my locust dest heavy destroyers and it took out my monolith gone just gone I was, at that point i was like well this is game and ironically though the thing you have to always remember with especially Necrons, the game is not over until you say it's over. And it's true. It's true. So my turn two comes around and I am I'm 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 in a rough spot, right? Because I got charged also by those those Terminators. They got in. Yikes. Did some devastating things. My immortals barely survived. I was shocked that they did at all. Not good, right? And so then I have to push up with my Lich Guard, my Locust Destroyers, go on one of my back objectives. My Necron Warriors, instead of Veil of Darknessing, I decided, you know what? We're going into this building where the Immortals all just got curb stomped, and we're going to all fire into these Terminators, and we didn't even kill them all. They're so tough now with Toughness 7. It's ridiculous. So that's something I will say. Um, custodies are crazy survivable now crazy because the lack of AP so sometimes you can't even get up to their four up invuln so uh, them still saving on a three up just makes them so tough which they should be right they should be absolutely I just think maybe an adjustment of five points or so on some of those those things might help a little bit but that being said Lich Guard and Necron Warriors are, are just as survivable if not more so it's kind of weird because of how many layers of defense we have so just saying it, it goes both ways on that one for sure. Mm. So turn two, I, I get rid of most of the Terminators. I believe at the end of that, like one was left, something like that. I use Oric and the Diviner to wipe out the uh, the back group of two. And you know, say hi, Nova. Hi, Nova. She just doesn't care. It was crazy because I'd lost all of my big weaponry. It was all gone. I didn't have a way to deal with this massive gunship that was now present on the field. Devastating. Devastating. So I just went, okay, I'm going to just try and see what happens. And we got rid of the Terminators to down to the last one and couldn't quite kill it in that turn. Nothing else could really be targeted because we just had to deal with the immediate threat because the other guys were holding back for a bit. I had I had shot one thing in turn one and, and killed a custodian uh, warden. I think it's the ones with the swords and boards. And then he responded. And after he did that, I used uh, Nemesir Zandrix thing where he's like, okay, now that costs an extra CP to use. He never used it again, actually, because of that cost. So that was actually pretty beneficial because that's a really good power for custodians because they can resurrect a model and one model of a custodies is worth so many more than mine crazy so turn three comes around and we are into some melee with my guys my lich guard up towards the middle and that's where things got really wonky uh he fired with his big gunship again and destroyed my locust destroyer squad down to the locust lord and i think it was that turn can't remember if it was that turn or the next, but I think it may have been that turn. He destroys my locusts lowered as well. Gets him gone. Or it was the next turn, but it just basically he was done after. No, I think it was the next turn. It was pretty impressive. He he put down a lot of fire right there, but didn't get to him just yet. It was the next turn, I think. Turn uh, four. Maybe. I don't know. It might have been that turn. But eventually he got all of that squad as well. But he one volley, all the locust destroyers themselves were gone. Crazy. And he charged my group and he didn't realize exactly what Z Nemesaur, Xandric, and Vargard did. And so I got to fight first and got to have, uh, I think the first melee it was... I know it was either the lethal, the sustained hits or lethal hits. I think it was the sustained hits, which is all right. It was it was usable. Um, Lich Guard are really good. They're really good. And so we battled it out in the middle for a long time and eventually came out 
on top and beat that entire squad at, by the end of the game. And his next squad came in and finally wiped out my Lich Guard. With this, then they broke apart and they, they did kill Vargard. And Nimisaur got to retreat out of it on turn five and let my other stuff just blast them for fun and get them down, I think, to their Blade Champion. No, not Blade Champion, the, the captain, the guard captain or whatever. It was cool just to see it because then it was literally at the end of the game his guard captain, the sniper guy, Trajan, and his big gunship, and that was all that was left of his stuff. And what I had left on the table were my Necron Warrior squad, which I think was close to full health. Definitely had lost a few just because we were in melee, and I was doing that on purpose at that point, but I didn't care. Um, just bring them back later anyway. My immortals were missing like two or three models by the end of the game because I wasn't rolling well on the reanimations. And Nemesaur and my Hexmark Destroyer. It was weird. It's like I didn't have a whole lot left on the table, but what I had was big squads still. And it, it just went down to a slugfest because on the turn, the next turn for movement with his big gunship on turn four, he had to move it off of the table. It, it, it stuck off the table, and so it had to get removed. And it was just enough, because he had to move at least a minimum of 20 inches, and so he got stuck and lost a round of shooting with that, which I think I still would have been able to squeak away with what I was doing, probably. But it was still an impressive thing. Oh, that was another thing. Uh, Emotech the Stormlord got to use his once-per-game thing and did mortal wounds to both of the Terminator squads, which really actually helped get rid of them because they're so hard to just move. But he has a feel-no-pain on everything for mortal wounds. It's so crazy. And Emotech got to shoot a little bit with his special gauntlet and his, his other stuff. It was kind of fun. Hexmark Destroyer wasn't as useful this game because now uh, my opponent knows what those do. Um... Necron Warriors, guys, I had Orc and the Diviner and the Overlord leading them, so I could use a zero CP on them once per battle round, so once for mine and his turn combined, one, two, three, four, five, five times I could get a zero CP, and the four up invuln save and the four up feel no pains from the Crypto Thralls, let me see if I can find them real quick, uh, the Buckethead Boys are silly, because you just resurrect them, First thing, so you take them as your 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 hits. So you have to go through now in order to kill Necron Warrior squads, a four up involve and then a four up feel no pain. Boom, boom. You are just so tanky. They don't hit as hard, but that was what was crazy. I used my stratagem thing to allow me after I lost a model in shooting phase to fire back at them. And if I have a character in there, it ignores cover. So I got to fire with my full volley of all 40 Necron Warriors because I just lost a Crypto Thrall after all the rolling. I wiped out all of Trajan Valoris's guards, like three three guys that were guarding him before they actually got into me. And it was insane. Like we were both shocked because I had so many sixes for the lethal hits and just so much damage was pumped into them. It was kind of insane. It's really cool. Like it was impressive. Uh, yeah. In the end, the game went down to the last turn, and I ended up scoring. We're doing the new point system. We don't have the secondaries yet, but it was seven points to seven points. I ended up being able to score two of the objectives at the very end of the game and going to 7-7. Seven, seven. So I tied up the game, even though he had taken out my Monolith and my Locust Heavy Destroyers on turn two without really getting to use much of them. The Locust Heavy Destroyers got the fire one time. So let me, let me just say um some things need to be adjusted i think from what i've seen on potentially the necron side because the survivability of some of my units is so silly it's it's just not even fun for the opponent but i will say that the the forge world gunship thing that the custodians have is crazy strong they need to give an invuln save or something to the monolith because it's just useless right now with that as far as survivability um what else what else we've got some weird shenanigans here uh hmm survivability of custodians have gone through the roof that's just my big observation and i just saw a picture this this morning from a friend that of the win rates and custodians are like crazy up there and rightfully so when you've got from toughness five up to toughness six or toughness six up to toughness seven 
and less AP. There, it's like constantly firing onto a walking tank. Constant in the game. And I, I like it for, for my friend, but my goodness, it makes for a bizarre game state when you're constantly at such a massive disadvantage. And that's what's interesting. I think Necrons are in such a better place, but not having access to Mephrit stuff and losing AP. Because, man, I could have my Warriors going with minus three AP sometimes, sometimes minus four, which is silly. Okay, that, that's silly. But the fact that I can have minus three or minus four, now I'm down to minus one and only one way to get it to minus two at all ever, and that's a Luminor Zeris. And he's like 220 points. Don't know. I just don't know if it's if it's where it needs to be just yet. I mean, obviously what we're seeing, Imperial Knights and Eldari as well are just skunking some stuff, and apparently Custodes are up there as well. I thought Necrons were even a better place, but the win rates are not good at the moment. Very bizarre. So I love where we're at with Necrons overall. I think there's some, some changes that need to happen because my Warriors and my Lich Guards, they're so ridiculous ridiculously good and then you just get to other sides of the, the 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 field as far as concept and like monolith and the the locust destroyers and heavy destroyers they're vulnerable which is kind of weird considering that you're supposed to be the undead awesomeness and yet they can just get tabled by certain things i don't know it's weird, like if you're just playing Custodes as a melee faction, very different story, right? Because you'd have some time to deal with some of it. But the fact that their Forge World stuff came out and was overall pretty good, which I'm glad, like there's some balancing here, like the options, but wow. I mean, he fired his big guns in and he did over 20 damage to it to destroy it in one turn. Insane. Insane. Just, it was cool, but then it was like, that's really strong, and it was really consistent. Hmm, <laughs> crazy. But let me know what you've experienced so far in Tent as far as battles. Uh, I think we are in a beautiful, beautiful state that's just going to keep getting better as the game gets, you know, these issues get fixed. So obviously, we knew, we knew this was going to happen, that they were going to come out with a new edition, and saying everything's balanced versus it actually showing up and being balanced two different things and that's what we're seeing and that's okay uh you know even if it's just some points cost updates boom you know that can fix a lot of things but it's also sometimes you need to adjust some stats and or abilities in order for things to really function as they need to I also think Monolith going so expensive and losing range doesn't make sense to me. And yet Locust Heavy Destroyers, if memory serves, they went down in price and went up in range. Uh, I just don't get that. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think so far of the game state in 10th edition. I've been Cody from the Keepers Nerdum. Take care, y'all. Bye.